During a wine-fueled evening of dreaming and a craving for adventure, my husband and I decided to purchase an RV. Our plan was to head to the US. Not forever, since we had to return to Canada for work, but for as long as it took to avoid a cold Alberta winter. Neither of us had any background with recreational vehicles or spent any time in the wilderness. <laughs> Besides a few party campfires, our only experience in the great outdoors involved a truck tent, which is exactly how it sounds, a tent designed to fit the back of a truck's box. During our first night, the wind and rain whipped our tent so violently that we couldn't sleep. The crash of a tree made our next decision easy. <laughs> At dawn, we folded that tent. <laughs> and later dropped it off at a Salvation Army. <laughs> if I learned anything from our blustery night, it's that I hate feeling vulnerable, especially when isolated in the woods. <laughs> and I worry about everything. I am not a happy camper. <laughs> That's okay. But an RV. For two decades, we talked about how free we'd feel soaring down the highway. And unlike tents, RVs had a roof and walls. Now that's where we could feel safer from the elements. <laughs> Speaking of elements. <laughs> how hard could it be, Paul said, as he flipped through RV catalogs with glossy pages and alluring <coughs> banners. Unscheduled. Go RVing, and RV, RV travel does the heart good. And my favorite, oh darling, let's be adventurous. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like fun, I said, imagining my adventurous hat pulled on tight. <laughs> A symbolic hat that would unlock new doors and offer us new choices. The thought of traveling and exploring felt exciting and powerful. In 2006, we bought an 18-foot tow trailer. For our first RV, we didn't want anything too big or complicated. The first time I stepped inside, I felt cozy. It reminded me of a playhouse, from its scaled-down cupboards to its small sinks and appliances. It also had an adorable bathroom and tub-shower combo. <laughs> As a child, I'd begged my parents for a little playhouse of my own. <laughs> but then I also begged for a horse, and I didn't get either of them. <laughs> Before venturing across the border, we wanted a practice, practice run, so headed for a camping excursion in our own province. Within hours of RV ownership, pounding hail forced us off the highway. It smashed the rooftop vent and broke off the ceiling fan leaving my adorable bathroom wet and open to the sky. <laughs> You've got to be kidding, I said, mopping the floor and gathering shards of plastic. This means we're hail christened, right, honey? He didn't answer. He was busy on the roof, figuring out which parts we'd need for replacement. Better, he did more fixing than talking because his can-do attitude always calmed me down. Bring on the learning curve. In our home is where you park it lifestyle. For example, bad weather follows when you live in a trailer. Within minutes of unrolling the awning at our first campsite in the Rockies, clouds moved in and dumped more rain and hail. Are we having fun yet? <laughs> I called out as hail hammered our roof again. Over the roaring wind, Paul couldn't hear me. He was struggling to roll up the awning again. <laughs> the, star the storm broke long enough to start a campfire. Then came another blitz of rain. Paul covered our sputtering flames with a tarp. We hunched under that tarp, each holding up a corner and gasping for air. Through fits of coughing, I called out, is this the fun part? <laughs> I, I couldn't see him through all the smoke. Good times. <laughs> Back to the learning curve. Always keep track of numbers. Our electrical panel was 30 amps, which meant we could only run certain appliances at the same time. In addition to the fridge and lighting system, our microwave needed 12 amps, the space heater 10, and our coffee maker 8. Decide what's most important, your nuke leftovers, 
warm toes or a cup of joe. You can't have everything together. <laughs> and if Paul wanted to plug something into an outside socket, he'd have to get clearance from me on the inside. Wait, I'd call out. I'll turn off the kettle. Is it time to crank on the air conditioner? Factor in 15 amps for that Titan. We constantly pulled cords and flipped switches. This unscheduled lifestyle grew complicated. <laughs> Unplugged was closer to reality. There's more to that learning curve. Expect the unexpected. During our first winter outside Canada, Paul wanted to spend a few nights in the Arizona desert. As we drove out of Quartzsite, I questioned this move. Not only were we out of visual range of the city, but we were out of roads, driving slowly <laughs> to avoid large rocks <laughs> and deep gulches. Honey, I said, if we have to get out fast, there's no way. Where's your sense of adventure? Stop worrying all the time. But that's what I do. Somebody has to worry. I'm the logical slash anxious one in our relationship. <laughs> I list bullet points of danger, of possible dangers, in a high-pitched voice. <laughs> well, Paul's the don't worry about it guy who simply doesn't break a sweat under pressure. Turns out it was a cool experience with the desert's rocky terrain, cactus, roadrunners, and bobcats. <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> we also spotted a few small tents as we drove, yet nobody was around, not even a parked vehicle. Paul, I don't feel good about this. Maybe people sleep in them and work in town for the season, Paul said. Why else would somebody piss, uh, anybody pitch a tent in the middle of nowhere? Now, tents don't look strange when set up in monitored campsites or in a state park and filled with travelers but scattered in the middle of a desert with nothing and nobody around? I was getting a weird vibe. With the sight of flat land, Paul stopped and parked. Although we had no idea how far we'd headed from civilization, the breeze felt warm in our lawn chairs, the beverages poured cold, and then the sunset. Suddenly, everything outside our RV windows looked shadowy and unrecognizable. Paul. My phone isn't getting a signal. Where are we? I, I've no idea, but we'll be okay. We'll be fine. His voice had less conviction since losing our sunshine. We'd just gone to bed when a light flashed across our wall. What the hell? I whispered. A car appeared and made a slow circle around our trailer before driving away. Minutes later, it returned and circled again just as slowly. Our escape plan? We had nothing. <laughs> Weapons? Nada. Worse, we couldn't drive away without leaving the RV to get to our truck. Before that, we needed to hand crank the jacks that balanced our trailer. And how fast could we drive across deep trenches in the dark with a trailer behind us? The car returned and circled a third time. By now, we'd yanked on our jeans and Paul dug through the cutlery drawer for sharp objects. Every horror movie I had ever watched bombarded my brain. I envisioned our horrifying future. The door kicked in. Sweaty people pointing weapons. Me peeing my pants. <laughs> Neither of us spoke. All I heard was my shallow breathing and pounding heart. We stood on guard, Paul with a bread knife and me with a meat tenderizer. <laughs> I started to pant. For sure they'd steal our truck and trailer. Would our sun-dried bodies ever be found? Is this it? I'm not ready. And then, nothing. No more flashes of headlights, no more circling car. Paul snorted and started to giggle. What's so bloody funny? I snapped. <laughs> I bet that car was somebody, I bet that car was somebody looking for their tent. One of those tents we drove past? They were probably lost in the dark. Phew. My heart rate and breathing slowed, although I kept on my jeans and sneakers and didn't sleep more than a few minutes at a stretch. Paul spooned me tightly, and I'd never appreciated the rising sun as much in my life. 
While scary movies are entertaining, the plots take on new meaning when there's a chance you are about to play a starring role. <laughs> Once back in town and plugged into the services of an RV park, we agreed that our off-road experience was done. Glad we did it and glad it was over. I'd never realized how much I rely on services like cell phones, electricity, and someone to call for help. <laughs> After that scary night, my adventurous hat fit better, and then I grew a little braver with every new journey. I imagined fewer what-ifs when we hitched up and headed out to different locations. <laughs> And was I having fun? Absolutely. I love this alternate lifestyle, the unexpected places we landed and the quirky travelers we met. We lived out a dream we'd invented for ourselves 20 years earlier, together. Paul and I enjoyed the lifestyle so much that we ordered a bigger trailer and lived in it for six years spending half the year parked between two casinos in Las Vegas <laughs> and the other half on an Alberta horse ranch. What's not to love? One day in Vegas, while putting away groceries, I realized that it took me until middle age, but I finally got my playhouse and my horse play. <laughs> Best of all, I survived. I have my PhD in RV. Good times indeed. That was Vamp First Timer Shannon Kernagan!